can see. Yeah, we're on. Let's start with prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for your blessings. We are just thrilled, and I know you are over-thrilled about what's about to happen here in our church. Two young people to give their lives to you, becoming part of your family. Because of your sacrifice that they've accepted in their lives. And so, Father, we ask that your angels be present. Fill this place with this celebration today. We ask these things in your name. Amen. There are many ways, places, and things I could start with talk, my comments this afternoon. Every one of you have the full right to look and say, who is Savannah and Raul? Because you've never seen them before. Raul says he was in our church in 2017 about for a Sabbath. He had visited once. Full confession, I don't remember. And so you could ask, why would the pastor have the baptistry full and ready to baptize these people when we haven't seen them before? I'm going to give you a quick history of how we met. And I'm going to tell you from the Bible why we're here today to, for the baptism. I received a phone call uh, Monday, Sunday, Monday, something like that. Of a young man on the phone and said, uh, you're the pastor of the church. Went something like this. Yes. Um, I really would want to meet with you. Uh, I want to be baptized. And uh, I, I need to visit with you. Awesome. And so we set a time Wednesday morning at 930. And Raul and I met in our upper room over here. And we visited for two and a half hours that morning. In the course of the conversation, Raul shared with me some of the challenges that he's dealing with in his life, has dealt with, is dealing with. And he had two big questions. How can God forgive, I guess three, how can God forgive me? How can I forgive others? And does God hear my prayers? Awesome questions. So, Raul has been, I think I said this morning, he's been in Korea for the last year. He worked, he's in the Air Force, and he was stationed there in Korea, and now he's being transferred to over by Frankfurt, right, Germany, uh, based outside of Frankfurt, and they'll be there for about three years, where their child is going to be born here in just a few months. Grandpa and Grandma are going to have to fly. You got to. <laughs> and we had a great conversation that morning. I'm going to look, we're going to look at really quickly the chapter that Raul and I really focused on Wednesday morning. Savannah came to pick him up after the meeting and introduced myself, and I fell in love with your sweet smile right away. And I asked her, will you come and visit with us Friday morning? And she said, yeah. I called Tom Schaefer because I told Raul about a man that's a member of our church that was uh, a Green Beret. And he was kind of interested. I'd like to kind of meet him. So I called Tom, and I had Tom come and meet with us on Friday morning, another two and a half hours. This is what we talked about. If you have your Bibles, you want to look. Acts chapter 2. This morning I posted on my Facebook page, if some of you guys are friends with me, you saw something to the effect of this. I asked a question first, did you feel a wind blowing this week? And then I made the statement, I have felt the mighty wind blow personally and through individuals this week. And that wind is the wind of the Holy Spirit, right? And I quoted 
Acts 2.2 in the post. And I said, he continues to blow this afternoon in our church with a baptism. We're not going to read all of chapter 2, but I just want to look at a couple parts of it. Um, Starts there in verse 1, it says, On the day of Pentecost had come, they were all fully in one accord in one place. The disciples were praying together, right, for this promised gift that God was going to send upon them that Jesus told them about. Verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. The rushing wind of the Holy Spirit. This week has been a rush. But it's been a rushing wind of the Holy Spirit leading in your guys' lives and in our meeting our times together. Savannah was not going to get baptized today. It was Raul. Three quarters of the way through Friday morning, I looked at her and I said, do you want to get baptized with him? And he, she immediately said yes, which took me back by surprise, number one. And then she goes, were you planning on asking me? Uh-uh. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, ask also. And so we're here. Now it goes down and starts talking about how the disciples spoke in all these other languages that were there. People from all over the country were there in languages, and it has a whole list of them, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight different nationalities that were represented there and, and, and they were all hearing the disciples speak because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured upon them to speak in these other, other languages and they started to mock the disciples and said oh, they're drunk, they're crazy, this can't be happening, whatever it was but down in verse 14, Peter standing up, the eleven, raised his voice and said, men of Judea all who are dwelling in Jerusalem let this be known to you And heed my words, for these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour, morning hour. But this is what was spoken to us by the prophet Joel. And he quotes Joel there for a few verses. And it came to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions. Old men shall see dreams of dreams. And on my men's servants... Now my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on this earth. And it goes down and talks to those. And verse 21 ends with there, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's the power of Jesus' name. Raul and I talked about it. So can you, I asked him, you know, can you give me an example of someone in the Bible who called upon the Lord's name and was saved instantly? The most prominent one that comes to my mind whenever I think about this is the thief on the cross. Never had a chance to come down from the cross and be baptized formally. But he recognized something in Jesus, who he was, what he was. And he said, I want that in my life. And he looked at him and said, remember me. I believe fully in my heart without a question of doubt. And you and I can argue about this. If someone is brave enough to argue with me about this, that's fine. But that thief on the cross was fully baptized by the Holy Spirit in that instant. And Jesus' response was, you will be with me in paradise. What didn't the thief know? A lot. What did he know? The name of Jesus Christ. And he called on it and was saved. Peter goes on. Uh, Let's go down to verse 29. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us this day. David, he had just quoted David's prophecy about someone being risen, and that was Christ Jesus. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that through the body according to the flesh he would raise him up 
Christ to sit on his throne and foreseeing this sits on the throne. Peter keeps expounding on this. Verse 32, this Jesus has raised up of which we are a witness, therefore being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from him the Father, the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. They were hearing about Jesus. Verse 36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that the God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, because he had just told them that one that you crucified, you know, that you took with your lawless hands, you crucified him. This is the one we're talking about. Now when, you, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. They were moved with conviction that this is true what Peter was saying to them. That this is the Jesus truly is the one. And they said, Men, brethren, what shall we, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent. Ask for forgiveness for what you've done wrong. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Why are we here? Because Raul and Savannah have called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ want him in their life, and they have repented of their sins. And they want to be with him. The rest of the chapter talks about how the church grew from here. But there's an important part to repentance, asking for forgiveness, asking God into our lives and being baptized. That's the beginning of life. And I've asked, I've challenged Raul and Savannah about this. And, and I told Raul on Wednesday, I said, don't worry. There are Adventist churches in Frankfurt, Germany, and I'll let you know what they are. And I went home that night, and I Googled them. And I found two churches in Frankfurt, Germany. And we came back, and somewhere in the conversation real quickly, Savannah said, well, there's a church 20 miles from our base. They had already looked. Awesome showed me they don't want this to be a one-time event. They want to grow in Jesus Christ. And that's what's needed, growth in Jesus Christ. I could go on and expound. I could share with you five hours of stuff that we talked about, but I'm not going to do that today. This is the part that saddens me. They leave Wednesday. And we've only just begun. I would love to spend hours and hours and hours with you two and your mom and dad in the upper room studying together. This is a family. I don't know if you're able to see how many people are here. This is a small part of your new family. Because it's God's family. And you guys are going to be part of our family for eternity. We're going to pray for you. You better send us pictures of the baby. Okay. <laughs> Savannah grew up in an Adventist setting, and she went to churches in Arkansas. I said, well, where'd you go to church? And she said, because if you talk to her very long, you can hear Arkansas in her voice. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> and I said, I've been in all those churches. She goes, no way. I said, yeah. My dad was a pastor in Arkansas, Louisiana, for a while. She goes, you can't be in all those churches. Then Tom had to add this. I don't know if you heard him say this. 
It was a few years before you were born that I was in those churches. <laughs> it was before I was in academy. Um, it was young. No matter where you go in this world, this is your church family. No matter where you would decide to put your permanent home and membership, this is still going to be your church family for life. You can't get rid of this. In a few minutes, they're going to go up. We're going to get baptized. I just wonder if we have a motion by somebody in the church that we would accept Raul and Savannah as part of our church here in Iowa City. Motion? Have a second? Great. All in favor? Turn around and look at your church family, guys. Keep your hands up. All right? Your church family. Here's your baptismal certificates. We'll give it to your mom because you don't want to get them wet. <laughs> Wednesday, Ruel said, do you have a Bible I could have? And I gave him one of the Bibles that we have in our church that we need. We're getting more of. They're coming because we're giving them out so fast. God is so good. And that Bible is special because I love the helps and the teachings in the back of it. Okay? Very, very special. But we have another Bible for you guys today also. Okay? A little bit nicer than that one I gave you the other day. This Bible has something I never knew that I guess I didn't know that they had done yet. In most Bibles in the New Testament, when something is read, what does it mean? Have you ever seen a Bible with blue in the Old Testament? This Bible has blue in the Old Testament. These are the best that we can understand the words of God spoke in the Old Testament. Kind of cool. Didn't know it was there. And there's some great study helps in here and stuff for you, too. So this Bible is for you, too. So I hope you can find room in your backpack on the plane for that. You'll make some room. We'll give that to your mom, too. I'm going to invite uh, Savannah and Raul to stand up here with me right now. We're going to have a word of prayer. We'll go up and get baptized. Holly can play some more music when we're done. We'll quick change as fast as we can, and we'll meet everyone back in here just as soon as we can, okay? Father God, I am so happy, so blessed to have seen your Holy Spirit work this week. There's no place I'd rather be right now this afternoon than standing here with my new friends, Raul and Savannah, their mom and dad. And as they step into the water, Father, they come out made new in you. I would ask when they leave this place, they never leave you. They will continue to grow together. As their baby is born soon, they'll teach this young child about you and your love for, the, for them. And Lord, I pray we can see each other again on this earth. But if not, I pray by faith in your word that we will see each other in heaven. So as Raul and Savannah leave our place, send your angels to protect them, guide them. Wherever they call home, I ask that it be your home also with them. We ask these things in your name. Amen.
completely left me here to die. Take it personally. Take it personally. Because everything is personal. You are allowing God to be in your life. This is just the baptism is a symbolic expression of doing everything I need to do right. And the result of it all is this. Is that this thing is now a good thing. And it's such a pleasure. Give your life to him. To accept his forgiveness and his love and his promises is unconditional. That I got baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Living with your mom and dad, they love that kind of spirit, and I can tell it's real. Yeah. And then you ask me, you know, if you want to be baptized, if you want to be baptized, I say, ah, you're right. Yeah, it's not a real thing. It's kind of fake, isn't it? Amen. It's awesome to see you, Holy Ghost. What a great way to start a new beginning. It is so awesome.